everybody. Welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica and today's video is our seventh grade homeschool choices. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing kind of an overview of what I have picked to use with Emily for her seventh grade homeschool year. The things that we're going to be using all year, like our math, our English, that kind of stuff. But I'm still going to be coming back on a quarterly basis to share with you guys more in depth about how things are going and specifically what we've chosen to do in that term because we tend to split our terms up in two quarters we will have a fall term a winter term well holiday and winter term kind of combined together um, a spring and then a summer term and i like to do that because i don't plan more than two or three months ahead like i said i have a general idea of like this is the math i'd like us to get through this year those are the things i'd like to touch on for language arts these are the, you know, maybe the books I want to read, whatever, but I don't plan like our unit studies or our deep dives until we are closer to that time period, because maybe Emily's interests change, maybe our life has shifted and I need something a little less hands-on for me. Maybe we're going on a field trip and I want to tie it into that. So I don't plan that yet. Like I'm pretty sure I know what we're doing for the fall already but I'm still putting the final touches on that. So once I've done that, I will come back and share that with you in a few weeks. With that being said, I have not shared our one thing yet for this homeschool year, because typically it's like this big thing that I have a lot of resources for. And so it makes sense to be in its own video this year. It is probably the biggest thing of all, but I don't have a lot of resources for it. So I thought I would just talk about it right now. So in the years past, if you are new and you don't know what I'm talking about, I've always chosen one thing to really focus on in that homeschool year. It helps us really nail that thing down as a habit, make it a priority, and then it kind of stays in our homeschool as we add something else the next year. So in the past, we've done read alouds, we've done game schooling, we've done nature study, we've done critical thinking and logic, we did field trips, um, in all of those things, uh, poetry tea time one year, and all of those things kind of become like fundamental in our homeschool. And then we just keep adding to them. Um, this year I have decided to focus on something that is not tangible, which is the first year I've actually done that. Normally there is something tangible, something that I can like count. Like if it was read alouds, we read aloud a hundred books. So yay, that was a success. Um, if it was field trips, we went on, I don't know, 30 field trips. So yay, it was a success or you know, nature study, these are the things we learned about. So yay, it was a success. This year for our one thing, I have chosen connection. Um, I have realized that as Emily is getting older, there is like this internal struggle for her and I both, where like she wants to be more independent. Um, I want her to be more independent. I'm giving her boxes to check. She's happy to check those boxes. Um, and while we still, I mean, obviously we're homeschooling an only child connections bound to happen, but that meaningful like connection that was just so natural and easy when she was younger is not coming as natural and easy. Um, I'm not saying that we're not connecting. That's not what I mean. I mean, in our homeschool, like before, when she was younger, she had to have me to play a game or she had to have me to read a book or, um, we were home all the time. So I was filling the time and the space with books or games or watching documentaries together or whatever. And now she's a tween and she is involved in a lot of extracurriculars and we are all kind of um, doing some of our own things. And it just feels like we're, we're missing that like deep, meaningful connection. So that is my priority this year. Also, I find that as we get um, further into the homeschool years, it's more of a struggle. Um, for me as a homeschool mom, because it's really easy to get wrapped up in the academics. Like the older they get, you, you mentally feel like they need more academics and they need more um, rigor, which I mean, maybe they do, but it's just too easy to become like a checkbox mom. Like you need to do your math, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do that. And to let like those fun things that were how we connected fall off. For example, last year I noticed we did a lot less read alouds and we played a lot less games. And those are two ways that have always been like huge for connection and like the fundamental of our homeschool. And instead of saying like, this was gonna be the year of read alouds or this was gonna be the year of games, which I debated like going back to those, it really came down to, it's not that we're 
not reading or not playing games or whatever, we're not prioritizing connection, which is kind of ironic because that's quite literally my homeschool mission statement um, was to ignite a love of learning while prioritizing connection and, and maintaining relationships. Like that's always been our homeschool mission. And so it felt very ironic that we had gotten so far away from that. So that is what I am doing this year. I'm trying to, above all things, make that our priority. Like make sure that connections and relationships are coming first and foremost. I should do that every homeschool year, but that's going to be our one thing because I want it to be at the forefront of everything. Um, so with that in mind, some of my curriculum choices reflect that as well. Let's just get started. The first thing that we will be using for logic will be the fallacy detective. I grabbed this because I thought this would be a really great way for us to connect and talk about things together. I mean, technically she could do the lesson herself, but I thought it would be fun for us to read the lesson and then discuss it. Um, there are 38 lessons. All of the lessons are about two to three pages of reading. So you can see here, like this is one page you would read. This is another page you would read. And then there are what they call exercises. Um, but I thought because conversations have become such a important part of our homeschool and another way for us to connect out that she's older, this would be a way for us to converse over that. Um, so like, for example, like the exercise is what form of bad reasoning, if any, do you find in the following examples? So instead of her just writing the answers, I thought we would use this as a really great way to discuss, converse, and maybe even dive deeper into, you know, why maybe her and I have difference of opinions or why people would think differently or why those were our answers. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and dive right into math because I shared with you guys on social media that I had a really, really bad week and I bought a bunch of curriculum. Some of it did end up staying, some of it did not. The one curriculum that has stayed that Emily has actually already started dabbling in um, over the summer because she was actually excited when it came in and she loves it which is so surprising because when I watched um, like the, the trials and the samples, I thought she's gonna hate this. Um, but so many people have recommended how great this is for older kids and I thought I'm gonna try it with her and she just, she loves it. Like we even went to lunch the other day with my mom and my mom's like, so how's, how's everything going? And she's like, Nana, I got a new math. Have you heard about Denison math? Which by the way is what we're using this year. Um, Dennis and math, I put her in the pre-algebra. <clears throat> For those of you asking, she um, came out of teaching textbooks. <clears throat> she completed math six. I debated having her complete math seven before we moved on to a pre-algebra, but after like really digging into this, there was enough review in the first couple of chapters. In fact, I think almost, let's see, it's like the first five chapters are just the basics and then they get into the algebra like in the second two thirds of the book probably. So I felt very confident letting her go ahead and start this. Um, if you have no clue what Denison is, it is, it's beefy. I'm not even going to lie, but it's not overwhelming. So Emily sits down for about 15 to 20 minutes each day. She watches a video with Mr. Denison. Um, he goes through and they do guided notes. So like he does practice problems with them and she has to write along, you know, alongside him when he's done with the video, she does an assignment. There's about 20 to 25 questions on the assignment each day. And then when she's done with the assignment, there's a solutions manual, which is not the teacher's manual. It is the solution manual for the child themselves to go check their answers. Um, and he's worked the problems out so that they can see where they possibly got something wrong and rework their answers. And then at the end of each chapter, there is a test. Um, but it's not overwhelming. I thought Emily would be overwhelmed by the whole idea of a test because of her anxiety. She's not, there's a pretest, then a test. And then if she still doesn't get a, you know, a good enough grade, I think it's a 90 is what their um, recommendation is on the test. Then there's a second test for that chapter that they offer. She loves it. She thinks that she thinks Mr. Dennison's funny. So I'm sold. Like, if it continues to work, I will be so thrilled. Um, along the same math lines, I also grabbed before personal finance. Um, when I ordered this, I went ahead and ordered the before and the beyond so that I could compare them a little bit more 
like side by side in person. I decided since Emily's 12 and the future you starts at 13 in this one, um, that we would go ahead and start here. I love the, the budget sections and like they give you even a, um, like a QR code that you can scan for like a plot twist, like an everyday life plot twist so that you're not just making like these fictitious budgets that sound really good in, in like fake life, but in real life they would never work. So I'm really excited to dive into this with her and have some financial background. Um, it discusses money, budgeting, smart spending, generosity, borrowing money, governments of money, banks, investings, insurance. So there's a lot of information in there and it's like each chapter that you do is for future use. So like imagine you're 13, imagine you're 14. So you're growing up while you're doing it throughout the book. And then because we are really focusing on connection, one thing that I actually am in the process of creating that will be available in a few weeks is a math for everyday learning, a real world math guide for learning for all ages. Um, my goal with this was to have ways to do math with Emily in real world. When she was younger, it was easy. You're in the kitchen, you're baking, so you just count the ingredients. Or you're, you know, outside, you're in the garden, you, oh, there's, you know, an array of vegetables, do the multiplication. But I have found it more difficult as she's gotten older to see those opportunities um, the way I did when she was younger. So unfortunately, it means we're not doing them as much. And because we're not doing them, I'm not like, oh, let's skip math today and bake instead, which I want to do because I want that connection. So I am actually in the process of writing a guide for me and for everybody else um, that breaks down math and real world. So like math in the kitchen, math at the store, um, math on the go, math and technology, math and the arts. And then it's going to break it down into each concept and subject and skill and all of the things. So like if you're working with number sense, here's some examples that you can use. If you're working with fractions, here's some real world examples you can use. Um, and then even advanced concepts so that I have a way to be like, oh, I wanna bake today. Let me flip through here and see what concepts I can work on with Emily while we're baking um, and get that connection and still count it as math. And then for language arts, English, whatever we're gonna call it, we are also trying something new. Emily started a little bit. She wanted to kind of dabble in it. So far she's enjoying it. We picked up Fix It Grammar. Um, I let her pick the level. She did editor in chief last year and she loved the editing portion of it, like the red pen fixing the stuff. So when I saw this, I was like, it's still kind of the same thing, but it's a sentence at a time. And she immediately was like, I wanna try it, but only if I can get the Robin Hood level. So I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even look at the other levels. I looked at Robin Hood, it looked doable for her. So I just bought that one. I have no clue if I placed her in the correct place. I honestly don't really care because she's excited to do it because of Robin Hood and how that ties into archery. And a lot of the sentences that she's done already talk about like him grabbing his bow or him being a great archer and that excites her. So if she's excited and interested in learning, I'm all about it no matter what level she should be at because I don't really believe in the whole behind the head thing. So Robin Hood is what we're doing. I have no idea if we will do this in the future, if this is a one-time thing, I will let you guys know and keep you updated. So far, she's done like maybe a week's worth. We both kind of like it. It's short, it's simple. We're literally done in less than 10 minutes. Um, and it's working. Like she's remembering things so far. And along the same lines of, we really wanna stay with that connection, I, thought back to like what last year worked the best for us for language arts. And one of the things that we enjoyed the most as a family was when we did our um, Christmas Carol novel study together over the holidays. So I decided that that's what we're gonna continue to do. So I'm in the process of letting Emily pick um, a book, like one every one or two, probably every term. Um, and I'm gonna create novel studies for them for, you, for us, but for you guys. So the first two that she has picked um, are Charlotte's Web, because that was just one of her favorite books like when she was little and she wants to revisit it. And then a friend suggested that she would really like The Giver. So after reading the synopsis of that, that's the other book. So I am writing those as we speak, um, much like the math, they should be out in the next couple of weeks. And then I will just keep letting her pick like hey when I sit down like hey what do you think you would like to read 
the next quarter somewhere between the you know two to four books depending on what our life is like and how busy we are and how many she picks um and then i'll write novel studies for them and we will read them together as a family and do the novel study as part of our language arts because it will include um comprehension, creative writing, figurative language, and then cross-curricular connections where we can enjoy some, uh, you know, math, social studies, science, and all that as it ties in to the study itself. So a unit study based around the novel, basically. Emily is also taking book club with Mary Hannah Wilson. She is only doing the 11 to 13 year old class this year um, because she's aged out of the eight to 10. And since we were adding novel studies. I didn't feel like she could really handle that would have been like three books a month. That's a lot plus her personal reading. Um, so she is going to only do the 11 to 13 year old class. She may end up joining her graphic novel class at some point this year. Um, she's still undecided at this time, but the books that they're going to be reading this year are the first state of being mercy Suarez changes gears. Masterminds, The Last Map Maker, Good Different, The False Prince, Keepers of the Lost City, Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa Vanishes, and The War That Saved My Life. Now, one of the things I love about these book clubs is that Mary lets the kids discuss the books. And so she's really getting that peer discussion. But I also love that Mary picks like one literary element um, to go with each of the books each month. So like setting, plot, the Keeper of the Lost Cities, they'll be talking about a cliffhanger. So it's a book club where they're talking about uh, the book and discussing it with peers, but also like because she was a homeschool mom, she's like, hey, let's throw in this. So like that's one thing that I know Emily's getting with her is even like an extra layer of novel study and literature terms. Okay, for everything else, for the most part, we are going to be doing unit studies, which is no surprise. Um, I have a general idea of what we will maybe do, but I don't have it all completely mapped out. That is one of the things I'll be coming back quarterly to talk to you guys about. But some of the things that like, I'm pretty sure that we're gonna do will be traveling the states, Traveling the Parks, Who Was Unit Studies, What Was Unit Studies, and the Where Is Unit Studies. And the reason I'm pretty sure we're gonna be doing that is because those are things that have pretty much been staples in our homeschool. Every year we do the state um, and the park every time we travel. So if we're gonna do any traveling that whatever state we're going to, whatever national park we're visiting, those are fluid and we do those as we're traveling. And then the who, the what, and the where books, anytime it ties in with a topic that we are doing, um, I always pull those mini units to do with them. So those will definitely happen. They'll be fluid, they'll be tied in wherever, but then whatever other topic that Emily's interested in or that we're gonna deep dive in, I will share more with you quarterly. The other extras will be discovery decks. I am not quite sure where these are fitting in to our homeschool day yet. Um, last year, Emily did them during breakfast. So she would pull one and watch the show while she was doing breakfast. That may still be what she does this year. Um, I've also debated putting them in our morning basket, which doesn't happen during the morning anymore, um, so that we could watch them together. Um, so that it would give us the ability to discuss what she's watched. So I'm not sure um, where it's happening. I know we also take them in the car with us on road trips too, which that we will still do because it's a great way to be like, oh, hey, let's watch a video about this real quick while we're driving. Um, either way, they have been invaluable in our homeschool. There are, I think, over 20 different topics now with even more coming soon. I think I have four new ones coming in the next couple of weeks that I've been working on. Um, seriously become a bestseller. You guys love them. They work amazing in our homeschool. So they're definitely not going anywhere. They will fit in somewhere, if not multiple different places. Games, obviously we will be playing a ton of games. Like I literally wrote on a post-it note, games galore. So I wouldn't forget to say that. Um, and subscription boxes. I'm going to have to tell you what subscription boxes that we have picked um, on a quarterly basis, I'm thinking. Because currently, 
Emily and Kevin are still trying to decide. She has aged out of a few, she feels like, and he feels like, but we're not sure if she's old enough for some of the others we've looked at. So we're still debating once we've placed an order and we make a decision, I will share that with you. And we will probably do whatever we do monthly so that if it's no longer working, we're not tied in to like an annual subscription. Um, the subscription boxes will definitely be happening. That's part of what Kevin does with Emily on a weekly basis during their steam lessons. And that's something that neither of them want to see go anywhere. Um, and then for extracurricular, Emily is still going to be doing 4-H archery this year. Um, I actually printed the handbook so we could be a little more organized. They do that practice weekly. Um, they do tournaments monthly. We will also still be doing um, tournaments as a family outside of 4-H. So she will be getting in a ton of archery. Um, she's sticking with karate, which that happens twice a week. Uh, so three times a week, basically between karate and 4-H, we are out of the house, which makes planning our homeschool days very interesting. I was actually just telling Kevin the other day that it feels like um, a puzzle, like sitting down and trying to figure it out. Because like on karate nights, we can't get into a project because we're going to have to leave, which means I need to start dinner early. And it's like, where do, you know, where do these things fit? It's like sitting down and doing a puzzle every single night um, or every single week getting ready for how the week is going to plan out. And I am not a huge planner. Like I would actually prefer to wing it, but that doesn't work anymore now that our schedule is so busy because if I just wing it, more than likely nothing is going to happen. So anyway, those are the things she'll be doing for extracurricular. She may add more in as we see how like our schedule is going to be. Um, but right now we're trying not to add too much in because we're actually planning for a pretty large trip this fall. I'll share more about that later. So those are our choices for our seventh grade homeschool year. And now I would love to hear in the comments down below what you have chose to use in your homeschool for the upcoming year.